So, thank you to be here. Today, I'm going to show you how to create a very simple Solana Explorer. And with this, we want to learn Web3.js. So, how it started? I wanted to build something on Solana, and I wanted to see some real use cases of Web3.js. So, I discovered this open source that is really great, but we can say that the code is very complete and it's not for beginner. And that's why I create a very simple Solana Explorer where we, today we are going to see how it's built so you can learn something from this project. To give you more context, I built this project with React, Chakra UI for the components, and TypeScript. So if you brought here your laptop, you can clone the final project and play around with the code so you can follow better this project. Now, a quick introduction to an uh, answer. In the project, we are going to use Phantom Wallet. So if you don't have it, I suggest you to install this, this extension. So a quick introduction to myself. I'm Giovanni Furin, and I come from Italy. And I'm an open source contributor to Moonshot Collective and Gitcoin. And right now, I'm working on Discovery, which it was in Discovery, we are going to launch our first product that is the Compass. The Compass will be a platform to welcome new users to the Web3. So we want to guide them and help them to learn. And the Compass, recently, we passed it uh, with 2.5 million GTC on Gitcoin proposal. And we are going to launch the alpha version by December. So if you feel uh, that you align with our mission and want to contribute, uh, it will be a pleasure for me to talk to you more about this project after this talk. Now, the first thing that we want to get to build the Solana Explorer is the, to get the price. One of the most popular and best solutions out there is to get it from CoinGecko. Now, I'm going to show you three points why CoinGecko is one of the best solutions. The first one is that it's publicly available. That means that you don't need to create an account and then a token to use it. Then it's 100% free, so you don't pay anything to use those API. And you have a vast uh, data, more than uh, 1,000 coins to get from. So to put the first two points into practice, that means that you just need a few seconds to get the data. You declare the ID. In this case, we want the price of Solana. Then we just fetch the URL and we get the data. Because we are using React, we create the state and we set the state, uh, set uh, the response to our state. How can we uh, know what's the structure of the response body? We can use console log but we also can go directly to CoinGecko documentation. It's very easy. You just have to search the API, try out, insert the required parameters, and run, execute the API, and you get right here on, in front on the page of CoinGecko the response, where you can choose uh, what data you, can, you want to get from. Now, uh, this data allow us to create the first session of the final project, so the price. Now we are going to dive into Web3. So we are going to get the active stake and the supply. So from Web3, we want to import the cluster API URL. So we get the URL, then we use the connection to connect to the URL, and we get the data. Uh, because we are using TypeScript, uh, we import the, the type supply and also type, type both account status from them. And what's inside those uh, types? For supply, we have, for example, total circulating. Those are numbers that is returned in Lamport that then we need to convert to Sol if we want uh, to show this to the final user uh, um, in a more user-friendly, uh, human-readable way. Then we have both account that return and write, and that's why we use reduce to get the total amount. 
So as I said, uh, we need to convert lampo to saw. From Web3, we can import the constant lampo per saw that uh, we can use it to create our function to format. Okay, good. And with that, we create the second section. Now let's review what we have learned so far by creating the cluster stats and transaction stats. For cluster stats, we import connection and cluster API URL. We get the URL from the cluster, use the connection to connect, get the data, then we use the, the structuring syntax to unpack the values and set the value to our state. And for transaction per second, we do the same. Connection, plus the API URL, we get the URL, we get the connection with the URL, and get the data. So as you can see, the most important class within Web3.js to get all the data is connection. We can know and check what we can get from connection through the documentation that is available on GitHub. But I think that there is a better place that is directly in the node module. So directly within our editor. We don't need to open a browser and go back or forth uh, using the, uh, the node module. We can uh, be more productive because we don't, do, don't, know, uh, don't need to move uh, out. Uh, so you, if you go inside the node module and search for class connection, you can see here all the functions that you can use. And they are self-explanatory. As you can see, everything are commented. Now, because we are building an explorer, we need to build the search. So we build the search in this way. Now, you can see that uh, we have an on submit function that will be called when the user input the query and, and hit the submit button. We import the base 58 encoding to decode the query. Then we evaluate the length. If this 62 is an address, and if this uh, is, is 64, it's a signature, then we show it the component accordingly. Now, for the transaction, we create a, a uh, to code, well, for example, we can get the signature status and get the block time. Uh, what's inside the signature status? Uh, said before, we can go inside node modules and we can see that signature status returns slot that indicate uh, when the transaction uh, when, uh, was processed, the confirmation, and so on. And then we create account details a card. Here we need to import public key that we need to uh, create a class and pass as parameter to get pass account info. And we may need to evaluate if it is a token, because not all accounts are the same. To make sure that we align with the terminology, account is a record addressable by a public key, and it may be an executable, executable program. And a program is the code that interprets the instructions. So in this chart that doesn't uh, see, uh, I think, there are several accounts. On Solana, there are special programs like the system program that create the main account. Then we have a token program which create the mint account and also the token account initiated to a main account. So with all those different accounts, we can uh, evaluate with the code and show on the UI uh, depending on the type of token in a different way. For example, for account, we show the mint. And for token account, we can show the uh, supply and mint authority. So till now, we built a very basic Solana Explorer. If we want, we want to go further, we can also allow the user to connect the wallet and see his amount of Solana. And to do that, we are going to evaluate if Solana exists within the window. So if they exist, we return it back as a provider and use it to connect to the wallet. Once connected, we can get the user public key and use the connection to get the balance. 
and then we set the balance to our component to show it on the UI. So if you go to the last part of the final project, you can hit the connect phantom, and once connected, it will show the user balance. That's all. Thank you. <laughs>